Uh, today we're going to talk about how we were able to implement uh, table statistics using samples uh, on Presto. Uh, first off, a uh, little bit about me and the people who worked on this. Uh, so uh, I'm a software developer at IBM. I've been here for a little bit. I was working with the Ahana team before they uh, got acquired by IBM. And before that, uh, I was at UC San Diego doing uh, graduate school. And before that, I was at Alexio, who you might have seen uh, at the PrestoCon today as well. Uh, and a large part of this work was thanks to uh, my colleague, Sho Wen, who I happened to meet while I was at UC San Diego before joining IBM. Uh, she worked on me, uh, she worked on this project with me uh, during her summer internship while working with the Presto Optimizer team at IBM. Uh, she's a fourth year PhD student in the CSE department at UCSD, advised by Amarnath Gupta and Arun Kumar, and she researches polystore databases and machine learning databases for machine learning systems. Okay, so before we talk about the sampling part, uh, I just want to talk about table statistics, why they're useful, and how the optimizer uses them, uh, so that we all understand why the statistics are important. Uh, so I have a big diagram here. On the left side and the right side, we have the same query being run. The only difference is that the query on the left side has statistics, the query on the right side does not. And so in Presto, the optimizer's goal, or in any, any database system, the optimizer's goal is to take the query plan that's generated by the SQL and basically come up with the most efficient query plan possible. Uh, what that means is uh, you know, your inputs and outputs to your query are generally always going to be exactly the same size, but it's those intermediate results between all of the operators, the filters, the joins, uh, the aggregations in your query that are going to cause the query to be slow or fast, depending on how your system chooses to execute it. So on the right-hand side, what you see uh, in this query is we're doing a three-way join. Basically, we're joining three tables together, all in the same key or column. And on the right side, we just have the join happening in syntactic order. So what you'll see in the query is we join T2 on T3 and then T1 on T2. And so what that results in the query plan is you have a join of T2 and T3 first, and then you join T1. On the left-hand side, we have statistics. And so what that means is the optimizer can actually make this determination and say, hey, the resulting output of that intermediate join between T1 and T2 is going to be a smaller result uh, in between than the one on the right side. So given the statistics uh, that we have for the tables on the left, the join, the intermediate join of T1 and T2 on the left side has a result size of, let's say, 10 records, or on the right side, it's going to be 100. And so that's why the left side is the lower cost plan, and that's how we get better query plans using statistics. Uh, this is a really gross oversimplification of everything that the query optimizer does, but uh, I hope this just gives you an idea of how the statistics are used. So why don't we just have table stats everywhere? Um, the problem is that they take a lot of time and a lot of money, and especially when you're working with data sets at the scale of potentially meta, Uber, running uh, full table aggregations uh, you know, across tens, hundreds, thousands of columns can cost a lot of money. Uh, and especially if you want to maintain those statistics, if you have data change over time, let's say 1% per day, you might want to rerun your aggregations to, to get your statistics. Um, you know, maybe once every couple weeks, once a month, depends on, you know, how much savings you want to get in your queries. Um, it can be really expensive to maintain those statistics. And so your savings with the, the optimizer or with the table statistics are going to depend on how frequently your table changes and how frequently you want to analyze the, the table. Uh, so can we fix this? Can we do better? How do we do better? So we kind of had two goals going into this project. We want to reduce the number of table scans that we have to do in order to get our statistics and also ideally decrease the amount of time we have to spend in the query system running Analyze, which is what generates all of the statistics. So what's the solution? It's sampling. Um, sampling is uh, basically a, something that pretty much all commercial database systems use. Uh, you'll find it you know, in Oracle. You'll find it probably in DB2. Um, maybe in Teradata as well. Um, but one thing that makes it really hard is that with samples, you have to have pretty tight integration between your optimizer, your storage system. You have to know where to store them. You have to put, find a place for them. And in 
the Presto world, the big data world here, um, everything is disaggregated, everything is its own service, and so it can be kind of hard to design a sample system just for Presto when you have to rely on all these other external services. Um, but we tried to do it anyways. So at a very high level, the way that we're going to do the table sampling or get statistics through table samples is you take your original table, you get a sample, small number of records. That could be 1,000, it could be 10,000, it could be 50,000. Might depend on how accurate uh, statistics you want for your sample. Once you have that sample, you analyze, and then you get the stats for it. And every time you run a query that uses that original table, in this case, uh, we have table T1. Uh, Any time that you reference that table in a query, those statistics that you stored from the sample will then be fed into the optimizer so it can use them to make decisions uh, at runtime when it's planning the queries. So this is great, but it doesn't fix the entire problem by just sampling, because even, <clears throat> even though we're able to create samples and use statistics in this scenario, uh, we still have to rescan the table if we want to generate new samples. Uh, to get accurate statistics as your data changes over time. So it doesn't fix everything. The maintenance part of this of, uh, the statistics is still going to be expensive. And so we also need some kind of routine to do the sample maintenance. And this is where things can get a little bit more complicated, but it starts the same way. You have your original table, you, stamp, you sample it, but then you have to calculate these table deltas. And this is the more difficult part. Uh, you have to figure out exactly, you know, between point A and point B, what changed, which records were updated, inserted, deleted, etc. And then you have to apply at least the updated records to your sample. And then if you have any new records or any deleted records, you'll need to potentially add them to your sample, replacing other ones. Or you'll need to delete records which existed in your sample that were deleted in the original data set in order to maintain the accuracy of your sample. Uh, you might run that a couple times, depending on how frequently you want to maintain your sample and your statistics. Then you'll finally run Analyze in your sample to get the stats. So this whole system I just described, it seems simple enough. Like, why can't we do it? What's the hard part? Um, first is the sample collection itself is not something that was possible in Presto before we started working on this. Um, also, calculating the changes or the table deltas uh, was not possible, and also having to map the statistics for the sam uh, from the sample domain to the domain of the whole table is something that we had to work on as well. And I'll go into detail on what each of these challenges were uh, in the rest of the presentation. All right, so the first uh, challenge is this reservoir sampling problem. So sampling might seem straightforward, right? Like just pick 5%, 10%, 1% of your rows depending on how, much, uh, how accurate of a sample you want. But the problem is uh, you don't want the sample really to change. You don't want to have your sample change in size with the size of your data set. Um, uh, because that means your sample, as if your table grows over time, your sample size is also going to grow. And depending on the original percentage of records that you pick to sample from, uh, it could get more expensive over time. So ideally, what you want is this thing called a reservoir sample where the sample is kind of fixed in size no matter what. And Presto has this table sample operator, but the problem is the table sample operator that Presto has uh, only supports sampling by percentages, not by picking a, a fixed reservoir size. So we want something that as your table grows, you have the exact same sample size. Uh, you guarantee that that sample is representative of your data set. Um, and so what you need in order to make sure that your sample is representative of your original data set is what, it's a Bernoulli sample, is the kind of more academic term. But basically what that means is that if you have a Bernoulli sample, every single record in your sample has an equal probability of being chosen to be in your sample. And so if you have uh, a reservoir sample of size 100 and you have you know, 10,000 records, your probability of every record being in the sample is going to be 100 over 10,000. But then what if your table grows to 20,000? The probability that every record is in your sample should now be 100 over 20,000. Um, and if you just picked a fixed percentage, of course, your sample size would grow. Um, 
I will talk about it in a little bit. Um, also, I'll just ask that we save any questions till the end. Um, we should have plenty of time. So we needed to find a way to, to create these fixed size Bernoulli samples. So what we did, uh, or actually what I should say is um, this picking a fixed size sample and maintaining a fixed size sample with changing or increasing data, academically it's called this um, sampling uniformly from a stream is the, the academic problem. And it's something that's studied and was proposed uh, all the way back in the 1980s. Um, however, most of the solutions focused on a single node um, solu implementations where, you know, if you have a single node, you're streaming data through it, you can pick a reservoir sample from a single node. Uh, but in the big presto, big data world, you really don't want to stream all your data through a single node to pick your sample because if you have petabytes of data or terabytes of data in a table, streaming that all through one node can be very time consuming. And so we could do this in a distributed way by partitioning all of the data among nodes, but then we need a way to merge your samples together. And so um, our sample maintenance problem and, and sample creation problem actually ends up being this sample merging problem. How do you create a bunch of fixed size reservoirs from partition data set and then merge those samples back together so that we can create the samples quickly, update them quickly uh, by using the power of you know, the big clusters and hardware that we, uh, we have. And so we created this new uh, reservoir sample aggregation function uh, for Presto. And basically what it does is helps you, it's an aggregation function that creates these fixed size reservoirs uh, that guarantees the results are Bernoulli samples. Um, and at a very high level, it's pretty simple. Um, when you pass you know, a set of records through um, each Presto worker for the aggregation function, you create your fixed size reservoir sample. Like let's say it's 100 records in that sample. Uh, but you might have processed, you might have seen 10,000 records to create that sample in one node, but you might have seen 20,000 records to create that, that uh, fixed size sample in another node. So then we need to figure out how to merge those together. And what you do is you kind of calculate the probability um, by using the amount of records each node processed in order to figure out at which rate you should pick records from, or which probability you should pick records from one worker versus another worker. And so that's all done in this um, reservoir sample aggregation function that we implemented. OK, on to the second challenge, the change log. How do we calculate table deltas? So you might be familiar with uh, iceberg, hoodie, um, delta lake. So we have all these great table formats, uh, and we need to calculate the deltas uh, between different points in time. And most, you know, most people, one of the like, big features people, uh, um, I guess, market for these table formats is you're able to do this time travel, where you can say, at, you know, at table version this, run the query, or um, at table version Y, run this query. But what they don't usually advertise is calculating the exact difference between different points in time. Uh, and that's actually exactly what we needed. And fortunately, Iceberg had this like incremental uh, change log scan that exposes all of this metadata for us. Uh, but it's not something that's very widely used as far as I could tell. Um, I don't know how many systems are actually using the change log, but fortunately, we were able to use this Iceberg API to expose it pretty easily. Um, and so if you're familiar with Presto's Iceberg connector, uh, there's this way that they expose uh, the metadata tables. So like you can access the snapshot IDs and files of a particular iceberg table by this dollar sign notation in, in Presto's uh, iceberg connector. So on the top, I have an example of accessing like the snapshots metadata table. Uh, and so what we did is we implemented a change log table using the exact same syntax where you can say at a specific snapshot, give me the change log, and it'll return a table of records row level changes at that point in time until the current point in time. Or you can pick you know, between two particular snapshots, what is the change log? So we implemented this, uh, this table on Presto um, uh, in order to support doing this sample maintenance. However, uh, the change log isn't the end of the story with doing the sample maintenance because uh, what you need to actually do once you have all of the row level changes between a bunch of snapshots is you need to actually coalesce those changes 
into kind of like a final state to figure out what those records are. Because you know, maybe over the course of a day, a week, a month, uh, when, you're, when you calculate this change log, a single record could be updated multiple times, or you could have multiple records inserted and then updated. And so you kind of need to coalesce that into the final state for that change log. And so we also implemented this apply change log function, which takes the input, which is the uh, change log, essentially, all the columns of the change log and the values, the row data, and then um, outputs like the, the final state by coalescing all the changes between the, uh, between the updates. Uh, one of the other thing, one of the um, challenging things about this, or lacking features, I should say, is that uh, in order to coalesce all of these row level changes, you need to be able to accurately identify uh, a particular row. Basically, you need some kind of primary key to identify that one row is like that particular row and that an update should be applied to it. And so we needed a way to define like primary keys and Presto itself doesn't really have that today. Um, and Iceberg, or as far as I know, um, and Iceberg as well does not have the ability to define like primary keys on your Iceberg tables. Uh, and so what we kind of did for this is we did a, a bit of an ad hoc solution as we applied uh, a, basically a table property. We said, if you want to use the sample maintenance, you have to set a table property on your iceberg table that says the primary key is this column ID. And then we'd use that column ID when generating the queries to do sample maintenance. Uh, and so that would be something, I think Hoodie you know, has support for primary keys. Uh, it would be great to, to see something like that for iceberg. Uh, so that was the change log. And then the last, uh, the last thing is mapping sample statistics. And I'll talk about exactly what that means. So the values that we collect for statistics don't always directly map, or at least there's one that doesn't directly map, right? So if you're taking a sample and you have a min or max, right, the value of your min or max in the sample is probably going to be pretty close or exact to what the min or max is of your, your true data set. Um, or this should be close. Your null fractions uh, is a statistic that Presto collects. Right? If the fraction of nulls you find in your sample uh, is a particular value, it's very likely that it's going to be the exact same value for your entire your total data set. Same with the average value size and max value size. However, the distinct value count is a little bit different because if you're counting the distinct values in a sample of 1,000 records, your max distinct value count is going to be 1,000. But what if you have a table with 100 billion rows? Your max value would there theoretically be 100 billion, and your maximum dis or your, your actual number of distinct values is likely to be much higher than the number of distinct values you find uh, within your sample. And so we need some way to kind of map this, this statistic, this distinct values count in the sample to what it would be in the actual table. Uh, and this is a, a hard problem. Like academically, a lot of people have studied it. It's something that uh, people have looked at for a long time. Uh, we did a couple of tests using a few uh, different distinct value estimators. So the chart on the right has a couple of uh, distinct value estimators that we uh, went ahead and, and tested on different data sets. And uh, the x-axis is going to be the amount of skew that exists in that data set. So like highly skewed data sets are going to be on the far right, whereas a data set that is distributed completely uniformly is all the way on the left. And you can see that generally all of these estimators tend to perform poorly or as you increase the amount of skew in your data set. Um, and this is kind of true of like every estimator we found. Um, there was no like perfect one size fits all distinct value estimator. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, but we chose to go with the, the Chow estimator, um, the solid yellow bar, uh, as it gave generally decent results compared to the other estimators. And it was very easy to implement, roughly. Um, like the learned estimator is like a machine learning based estimator. And that would have required like building uh, an ability to building in the ability for Presto to like call out to a machine learning model, figure out you know give it all the features and then get the output. Uh, and that was something we we didn't have enough time to to do when implementing the like, proof of concept for this uh, this project. Um, 
So anyways, we went with the Chow estimator, um, and it worked pretty well, especially on the, you know, the, the pre-generated or um, the randomly generated TPCH and TPCDS data sets uh, tend to be uniformly distributed. So when we run our benchmarks, you tend to get better, <laughs> better results uh, using those, uh, that generated data. Um, but I think this chart helps give a good idea of how, how the error um, would increase maybe depending on your real world, real world data set. Okay, so last thing, let's uh, just talk quickly about our evaluation. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of testing. Uh, I mean, we did a good amount of testing, but we didn't test on every data set under the sun, but we did test on uh, TPCH and TPCDS. This chart here uh, is of the TP most of the TPCH queries, and the purple bars, the, the bright purple, is gonna be queries that we ran that had no statistics available. Uh, Dark blue is all of the statistics available. So we ran analyze on the full table. And then the uh, greenish and reddish bars are going to be the query run times where we use statistics from the samples collected on these data sets. Uh, I believe the run times were for SF scale factor 10 uh, on this particular uh, set of results. Uh, and basically what we found across most of the queries, depending on whether the queries depended on having good statistics or not to, to be able to run quickly, uh, most of them ended up being faster um, or about as fast as if we had the sample, if we had the full table statistics. So if you look at um, query like 19, for example, second from the right, uh, you'll see that basically the query result with no stats took about, I don't know, 10%, 15% more time than all of the other ones that did have statistics. Both the full, <coughs> sorry, full, uh, full table statistics and the samples. They had you know, roughly the same runtime. We, we tested across a bunch of the uh, standard benchmark suites with the sample statistics. And basically what we found is that the samples were pretty good uh, for the most part at giving us good query results without having to do analyze on the full table. Uh, so limitations in future work, um, after we implemented and figured out that this worked pretty well, uh, the reservoir sample function that we implemented, um, because it's implemented as an aggregation function, it has to serialize um, the whole sample every time it sends results between nodes. Your reservoir sample size is gonna be limited by basically your, your data size and how big your table is. So if you have a table with you know, a thousand columns, uh, you're not going to be able to create as large of a sample as if you had a table with five columns or 10 columns. Um, that's just uh, a limitation due to the way we implemented this sampling function as an as a aggregation function in Presto rather than uh, an, an operate, a new operator. Additionally, the, uh, the Chow estimator it's not perfect in all scenarios. It would be great if we could have implemented that machine learning based estimator. Uh, and I think there's, there's probably more that we didn't study that are available. Um, it would be great to have a system to probably pick or choose a good estimator or maybe execute a number of them in order to find the best one to use uh, or come up with a consensus like me and of all the different estimates. Uh, and then one of the other downsides is the system we built all of the maintenance is done externally. So all of the sample maintenance, everything I talked about before, is basically just a set of SQL queries that you need to run against uh, your tables. And Presto doesn't really have an ability to schedule and run queries internally. So you have to take all that sam those sample maintenance queries and put them into some external system uh, that's responsible for running and maintaining a sample on some schedule. And then uh, another one is that these, some, there are some changes that you need, um, you need to make write functions in C++. So not all of this work is directly available on the native worker uh, as of now, but we would like to do that in the future. Um, and it's also limited to the iceberg connector only. So again, I think Hoodie and Delta would definitely be able to support some of the work um, that we did here, we should be able to translate it to those connectors. But right now, everything was pretty much on iceberg. Uh, and then the last bit is everything that we've done, everything I talked about is the goal is to get it to be open source. 
We have a bunch of PRs that are merged or that are currently open. A few things are still work in progress uh, because we need to do a little bit more design for the within the community and make sure that we uh, are able to kind of allow samples to be used across more than just the iceberg connector. Ideally, we would have it in more places. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll take any questions now. Uh, thanks everyone for coming to the talk. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think we should do tests with larger <clears throat> with larger sample sizes. We didn't we didn't do large scale tests with the samples like you know SF 10k or or more. Um, I think we we did some um, I'll say surface level research looking at just um, this the world of statistics in general and like if you wanted to get the like mean of a particular column, like let's say you sample a particular column that's an integer, and you want the mean of your sample to be within, like, a, if I recall correctly, it was like 99.9% .9 confidence that your mean value falls within like 0.1% margin of error. Uh, I think regardless of what your population size is, like the math formulas basically said you don't need a sample size of more than like 20,000 actually to get that kind of accuracy. Um, so from my understanding, increasing sample size will probably really lead to marginal gains in performance, but I think testing with different sample sizes is definitely uh, valuable. Mm -hmm. Well, testing with different sample databases, I mean, you use the CCC one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we have uh, we have plans to do some testing on some of our other uh, internal workloads. Um, like I said, with uh, the biggest change is going to be um, with different data sets is probably going to be the <coughs> sorry uh, the uh, estimator. The estimator accuracy is probably what's going to lead to the biggest changes uh, in um, in the query plans. Is like if you have a bad estimator, it gives you a bad number of distinct values. That's when it's probably going to mess up the join ordering and give you bad query plans. Um, otherwise, um, I think the only other case where your samples might lead to different results or poor results is if your sample has bad min and maxes. Like if it doesn't pick the if it has mins or maxes that are not close to what the true data size is. That means the estimation that Presto guesses for the filter factors on queries is going to be poor, which means that you know the inputs to your joins might be um, wrong, which could also cause wrong join ordering. And I think uh, more data sets, again, is more, more testing, more benchmarking. It's usually always better. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. That's a good question. I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't work on, on that part of it. Um, but I believe, I think the, the citations there in the slides, you could probably go read the paper. Um, yes? Yeah, you're, you're totally right, and I agree. Um, I think that's something future down the line. Like, once we have these samples available, um, if Presto, like, right now, Presto has no ability for us, like, at least the, on the internal side, to execute and run, like, a query, like, without the user input. Um, I think that's, like, a, another system we would have to design for the optimizer. But I totally agree. I would love to be able to just kind of, like, run a query, the user's query on the sample, see what the results of a filter are, and you could estimate it using that as well. Any more questions? Great. Thanks, everyone.